This time on Motor Week 91, Buick reveals a very different 92 LeSabre sedan. Lisa Barrow meets an intelligent automobile. We'll take a quick look at Volkswagen's most exciting Jetta. And Craig Singhoff will meet some hometown folks who took on the world. So come drive with us next. Motor Week 91, television's automotive magazine, is made possible by the financial support of public television viewers like you. Your host for Motor Week 91, John Davis. Well, hello and welcome again to Motor Week 91. We're glad to have you with us. For two years in a row, J.D. Powers named the Buick LeSabre the most trouble-free domestic car. That's quite an achievement. One that perfectly illustrates how much GM's other luxury car division has turned itself around in the last few years. And rather than simply rest on its laurels, Buick is forging ahead. It's introducing an all-new LeSabre, one that borrows a lot of traits from its successful Park Avenue stablemate. It's a pretty radical change from the previous car, and it makes us wonder whether the changes are what's needed to keep the LeSabre's loyal fans happy. If the redesigned 1992 Buick LeSabre suffers from anything, it's an enviable identity crisis. At a quick glance, it takes a knowledgeable eye to distinguish the LeSabre from its close relative, the Park Avenue. But when you're judged best in quality and have a winning design, why not combine the two? With a bumper-to-bumper -bumper measurement of 200 inches and the same wheelbase as the Park Avenue, the LeSabre is definitely a robust, very American full-size car. But while the old LeSabre body began and ended with near right angles, the new car's styling meets the wind with gentle curves. The overall effect is still distinguished, but now far less stodgy. Exterior fit and finish, even on this prototype, lived up to Buick's new quality image. Our only complaint about the LeSabre's new styling concerns the tail lamps. Their lens shape is one found on smaller, less prestigious GM cars like Saturn. They detract from the car's character and otherwise graceful upscale styling. Powering the new LeSabre is the same GM 3800 V6 engine that powers Park Avenue. While lacking the sophistication of overhead cams, this engine includes port fuel injection, balance shafts, and advanced engine controls for quiet, efficient, yet strong operation. The horsepower rating has been increased and now stands at 170, delivering 220 pound-feet of torque. On the test track, the LeSabre's numbers speak for themselves. Nine seconds for the zero to 60 run. That's seven tenths faster than the Park Avenue Ultra we tested last year. While the quarter mile trip was over in 16.9 seconds with a final speed of 83 miles per hour. The electronically controlled four-speed automatic transmission that debuted in the Park Avenue a year ago improves LeSabre's smooth power delivery and responsiveness in spite of the longer than usual time it took our car to shift out of second gear. The LeSabre also performs with style on our handling course, executing quick maneuvers with grace and composure. Thanks to the optional grand touring package, our car felt more like a Regal GS than a Park Avenue Ultra. There is some rear end slide after repeated oscillation, but recovery is quick and controlled. The power steering pump lags behind fast input. The steering effort is pleasantly higher than expected, and driver feedback is good. Considering the car's weight, its moderate body roll is most acceptable. Highway driving presented a different challenge. The Grand Touring Package is rather harsh over expansion joints. If ride takes precedent over handling in your household, stick with the standard LeSabre suspension. EPA economy estimates are 18 city, 28 highway. Our combined town and country driving result is a reasonable average of 41 miles per gallon. Equipped with anti-lock brakes, Isla Sabre limited dough from 60 to zero in a short 120 feet. There was some fade after repeated hard stops, but we were almost stopped before the anti-lock system came into play. ABS pedal feedback is moderate. 
Inside, the expansive wraparound dash arrangement of the Park Avenue has also found its way into the LeSaver. Most controls are located in a concise area at the center of the dash. A CD player is available. Unfortunately, the fine gauge cluster of the Park Avenue did not carry over. Only speed and fuel readouts adorn the LeSaver. Safety points go to Buick for making a driver's side airbag standard equipment on all LeSavers, and an electric clear windshield is an option. The 55-45 split front leather seats are comfortably soft without being too cushy. They offer plenty of support for the back and thighs. A combination of power and manual controls ensures an optimum driving position. Leg and headroom are very good. There's plenty of storage space and convenience features such as a long armrest with cup holder. Isla Sabre Limited had the optional dual automatic climate control system that allows separate air temperature for driver and passenger. Some of our staff think the system has too many buttons that look the same. Our car's rear leather bench seat was soft and comfortable. Leg and headroom are plentiful. The trunk is long and wide. Unlike the Park Avenue, the LeSaver's trunk liftover is bumper height for easy loading. As of our LeSaver road test air date, only price estimates were available from Buick. The 1992 LeSaver base price is expected to be about $19,000, and the limited version at about $22,000. Since much of the LeSaver's new identity comes from the Park Avenue, our comparison starts here. The Park Avenue is 5 inches longer and 140 to 200 pounds heavier, but almost all other measurements are within tenths of an inch. Most engineering aspects are the same. It's the standard luxury features that up the Park Avenue's base price to $24,385. A Toyota Cressida also costs more than we estimate for the LeSaver Limited, yet anti-lock brakes are an option on the Cressida. Ten inches shorter, the Cressida has a smaller trunk and less rear leg room. It's faster than the LeSaber, but mileage is not as good. The Buick LeSaber scores well in our safety check. Driver's side airbag, anti-lock brakes, and rear shoulder belts are all present. There is no passenger side airbag. Hits for the LeSaber start with the graceful styling and the roomy interior. We like the versatile engine with its added horsepower. Buick's attention to safety for a mainstream family sedan is also welcomed. Misses include the rear tail-like design, and we feel the climate control buttons could be confusing for a busy driver. As with any look-alike, there is bound to be some resentment. Park Avenue fans may feel a little cheated, but Buick loyalists who don't want to spend an extra grand or two for the plush extra will find the 1992 Buick LeSaber is just what the doctor ordered. Indeed, LeSaber fans are being rewarded. They are getting the best Buick has to offer. While some of the changes are radical, we think this 92 version is just what's needed to keep the LeSaver on top.